Hey guys, Chris here with another video. So today I will not be doing any landscape photography. I plan on doing some wildlife photography. And for this special occasion, I got my hands on the Fuji XF 100 to 400 millimeter lens. Now for your information, I did buy this lens myself. This is not an advertisement and I'm not sponsored by Fuji in any way. This also won't be any type of technical review because I'm not that much into the technical details of the gear I use. But in this video you should get a decent idea of the practical capabilities of this lens. Now I would usually never shoot with such a long telephoto lens for landscape photography. I usually stick to my trinity of lenses. But for wildlife photography you need a longer range and that's why I got this lens. We will test this lens with the Fuji X-T2 and yeah, let's see if we can get some decent wildlife pictures with it. Now, wildlife photography is a game of patience, but I am not that patient. So I will be cheating a bit for this video. I'm not going to the zoo, but I'm here in en sur -Lesse in Belgium, where there is a large nature reserve and where some of the local animals roam free. I'm also here today because it's currently mating season for deer and that means that the animals are making a lot of noise, there is even some fighting going on, and they are grouped together pretty closely. So hopefully we will be able to get some decent pictures of the animals. Now the weather is not very good today, the sky is quite overcast, and there is a little bit of light coming through the clouds, but I'm not sure the sun will come out anytime soon. Now, before we go into the nature reserve, let's talk a bit more about this lens. It is Fuji's longest telephoto lens. And as I said, it goes up to 400 millimeters. So that's an equivalent of 600 millimeters, for example, on a full frame Canon sensor. Right off the bat, let's talk a bit about some of the pros and cons of the lens. Pros, it's weather resistance, it's stabilized and it's built entirely out of metal. It feels really good and sturdy and nothing is moving around or it's a really impressive lens. There are plenty of little features to it. There is this little gear over here where you can just turn the body into portrait mode when you have the lens on a tripod or a monopod. Now for wildlife photography you would usually use a monopod but I don't own a monopod so I'm here with the tripod. And another nice little feature is this little door on the lens hood, which you can open and then you can turn a polarizer when you have one on the lens. Now, I do not have a polarizer on the lens right now, but if I had one, I would really enjoy this little feature. As for the cons, this is one of the heavier lenses for the Fuji X system. Compared to the other lenses I'm usually using on the Fuji X-T2, this lens is really heavy, that's why I have it on the tripod right now, because when you handhold it a long time, well, your arms get tired. It's also not a cheap lens. I think it's one of Fuji's most expensive lenses for the X system. And yeah, that's something that you should take into account. The lens also feels slightly unbalanced compared to the smaller body of the Fuji X-T2. With a full-frame camera like the Canon 5D Mark III, it doesn't feel that unbalanced when you're using a large lens like this. But here, yeah, it's the body is, is, is really quite small. Now, I'm not using the battery grip. Maybe it would feel better with the battery grip. So I'm not entirely new to wildlife photography. I usually do landscape photography, but I did some wildlife photography in the past a couple of times. And I've been using the Canon 5D Mark III with a Sigma 100 to 400 millimeters. So it will be interesting to see how the Fuji X-T2 and the XF 100 to 400 millimeters compares to the full frame Canon 5D Mark III. So we are about to leave for the nature reserve. Let me explain to you how it works. The excursion works a bit like a safari. So we are taking a large bus which has no windows and it will drive us around the nature reserve. We are about 15, maybe 20 photographers and I can see a lot of Canon Nikon cameras. So maybe we'll get to compare some of the pictures later on. Let's go.
While we are taking a short break, let me walk you through the settings I'm using on the Fuji X-T2 this morning. For the aperture, I'm usually using 5.6, which is the widest aperture available on the XF100 to 400 millimeters at 400 millimeters. And I'm using 5.6 because I tend to zoom in at 400 most of the time to get really close to the animals. As for the ISO, I'm using a very high ISO of 12,800 right now here this morning because it's really dark in the forest and there is not a lot of light so you have to push the ISO really high to get a decent shutter speed because if you do not get a fast enough shutter speed you will get a blurry picture and the animals won't be sharp. When there will be a bit more light later on I will of course go down with the ISO and that way I will also avoid to introduce more noise into the pictures. As for the autofocusing I am using continuous autofocusing on the X-T2 and I chose one of the modes where the camera avoids obstacles that come in the way so that way when I am focused on one animal and it passes behind a tree and comes out the other way the camera keeps focusing on the animal and doesn't get distracted by the tree. Okay guys, I am back in the office. That's it for the safari in en sur -les. It was a fun experience and I think I got a few decent pictures with the Fujifilm X-T2 and the 100-400mm to lens. So let us have a look at the pictures I made this morning. So I made quite a few pictures this morning. I think it's about 500 pictures. But I won't show you everything because otherwise this video will never end. So I selected seven pictures to show you. Most of them are close-ups of the animals, but a few others are pictures that are more uh, blend between landscape photography and wildlife photography. Most of those pictures are still raw files. I haven't done any work on them, but a few I've already developed in Lightroom. So first of all, let's start with the one I took very early in the morning. This is one of the smaller deer in the forest and I like this picture because we have one tree to the right and it gives this sense of depth to the picture and you can imagine yourself being in the forest and looking at this animal. And as you can see the ISO is very high, it's 12,800 ISO at f5.6 and the picture was shot at 400 millimeters. And it's only 1 40th of a second, so for 1 40th of a second this is kind of incredible because this really shows that the stabilization of the lens works really well. Now if I zoom in here you will see that there is quite a bit of noise but that's absolutely normal at 12,800 eyes so it was very dark in that forest it was very early and it's just normal to introduce noise when you're using such a high eye so let's switch over to the next picture so this is one of the bigger deer this is one of the deer that was making some noise, as you've seen in the video earlier. And when I zoom in, we again have quite a bit of noise here, but we're only at 6400 ISO now. It's still pretty sharp, not that sharp as I'd hoped, but it's still okay. Then there is this picture, and for this picture I was actually panning the camera, because this younger deer was running around, and so I have a whole series of pictures of it, and this is the sharpest one. So again, we have quite a bit of noise at ISO 5000, but as a whole, the picture works quite well. Now, keep in mind, these are the raw files. There is absolutely no work done on them. There is no sharpening, no noise reduction, no nothing. Then I want to show you one more picture that is raw. And for this one, the ISO is a lot lower. It's at 2500 and we are at one thousandth of a second. And this is really sharp. Look at this you can really see the whole fur of the animal. You can really see 
all the individual hairs. It's really amazing. The detail is just stunning. For the other pictures, as I said, it's more a blend between landscape photography and wildlife photography. We have the whole landscape part with the trees and the mist rising from the forest. And it's this nice autumnal feel you have in this picture that I like so much. And we still have some animals here to the left. Then there is this other picture, which is also a bit closer up to the animal already, but it's still a blend between landscape and wildlife photography for me. And at the end of the morning, the sun actually came out because as you can see, the other pictures are quite flat because they're either made in the forest or there was simply no sunlight very early that morning. But at the end of the morning, the sun came out and created this gorgeous light and you can see all those little dust particles that catch the light and this creates a really nice atmosphere for this picture. So guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comments and I will try to do more reviews like this one. I hope you got a decent idea about the quality of the Fujifilm 100 to 400 mm lens. It's a really amazing lens and it is definitely worth purchasing it if you're into wildlife photography and if you own a Fujifilm camera. So don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you enjoy landscape photography on location videos you should definitely subscribe to my channel because I will do a lot more videos very soon. I have a trip planned in a couple of weeks where I will film some more videos and I have another trip planned later this year where I will definitely film some more landscape photography on location vlogs. I will see you very soon. Bye bye.